All right, let's start this off. Hello, everybody. My name is Rick Sadler. I'm with Hit and Run Candlesticks. Today's date is October 3rd, 2023. It is a Tuesday, I hope, and it's just shortly after 8 p.m. Eastern here. We're getting a little bit of a late start, but that's okay. We can take it later if we want, okay? Tonight, I want to um, talk, talk about uh, the T-line a little bit. Uh, and we're going to look at some longs and shorts, and we're going to talk about the, you know, T-line cross, or actually, it will be the lack of a T-line cross we're looking for. Uh, treating, treating the, I'll, I'll go through and explain what T-line is in a second. There's several strategies uh, on how to trade the T-line. There, there, there's several strategies to do that, and I want to show you a specific strategy. Uh, tonight and RCL I closed my RCL puts today for a nice little 43 percent and this was all because of that strategy if somebody reminds me I'll tell you why I close it in case I forget um, but uh, that's kind of what we're going to talk about and for the long side um, well here, here's here's what I'm actually in WBA um, this one's not going to qualify for that. The, um, uh, let's find SH. There you go. Um, SH qualifies for the strategy I'm going to show you, uh, right here. And we'll, we'll go through these and I'll try to be absolutely 100%, uh, as detailed as possible. I do need your help though. I do need you to ask questions, okay? Because we get to talking out here on the microphone, looking at the charts, and we explain this, that, and the other thing. And if there's no questions, then we just kind of assume, well, everybody knows what we're talking about. It's not like it's the first time the T-line's ever been talked about. So help us out a little bit. And if you do have questions, I will see what I can do about answering every single one of them. Uh, try to make it so you've got... Um, we're not particularly looking for trades for this week. If we run across some, great. Uh, if we do, I'll flag them up here if I like them. Um, and, uh, but it's more about if you don't know a good strategy in trading, and that strategy could be technical, that strategy could be fundamental, that strategy, anything you want. If you don't know a good strategy and if you don't understand the strategy you are trying to trade, and it doesn't matter who else is trading it, if you do not understand it, it will never, ever, ever, ever work out consistently, okay? So please, uh, I welcome your questions, oh, absolutely. Yes, the recorder butter's work is, is turned on. We're, we're already three minutes into it talking about a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> So let, let's see if we can get to it here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the market because it actually has a lot to do with this strategy. And you can even trade this, this strategy in any industry. You can also trade it in any time frame. Let me stop right here. And I want to share something with you. Please uh, indulge me. This, this is a um, uh, you know, free webinar. And I just want to share with everybody that if you're interested in taking a trial, $24.50, 30 days, we've got several flagship um, strategies. This is one of them, rounded bottom breakout, three eight trap, uh, blue ice failure, which we've coined from Dave Elliott, but it's a great trade, one of our flagship trades. Uh, if you want to learn those, learn about the trendicator uh, stops, entries, you know, what we do, then... 24 bucks, 30 days, it's worth it. Uh, we'll get this link out to you. Um, here, I can post it out right now if you're interested. There we go. Um, there we go. Try that one more time. There we are. Thank you. All right, now let's move on. So, um, let, let's look at RCL first. I closed out RCL today and RCL, I closed for 43%. Um, 20 goals, 20-some 20 goals, 
We're going to talk about that tonight, uh, what that is, because that goes to doubling your account in, in one year. And uh, so we'll talk about that tonight. Uh, but why did I close RCL out? Okay, it clearly looks like it has more room to go down. It really does. Um, it, it, at the close of today, there's only a couple reasons that I think it might not go down. Um, or I might give up some of those profits. Maybe that's probably a better way to put it. But it, it was my choice to take the risk off and put, uh, what was it here? Oh, it's not in this room. Doggone it. I know it's 43%. Uh, it was like uh, 20 goals. Again, we'll talk about that. Um, and, and that's part of risk. And I wanted to eliminate that risk. Uh, so, uh, and this was all based on that uh, T-line uh, cross or lack of cross. Okay. So let's go look at the market real quick. My market generally is the SPY. That's my go-to. I also pay a lot of attention to FNGU and the Qs. Those are my top three. Um, everything after that is sort of uh, second place. Uh, I do look at the transports. I do look at uh, uh, SMH. Those are important to me. Like I said, anything after that, pretty much second place. And it's just a two-man race. So everything else is right up there. Now, I want to talk about my moving averages really quick here. Um, this black line right there, let me put an arrow in there, huh? Let's see there. There we go. That black line right there, that is the T line. That is the 8 exponential moving average. This blue line is the 50 period moving average. This dotted line is what we call the dotted deuce the dotted deuce um, it is the 200 period moving average with a few twists on it um, this line right there that's red one that's the 200 period moving average okay um, a couple i didn't uh talk about yet uh, we'll talk about this one right there that's the 500 period moving average. Now, I want to say that I don't typically use that. But over the past year or so, year and a half, something like that, I have started to use it. I used to use it a while ago, several years ago. And I used to have it on the chart. And then I took it off the chart because it just wasn't it just had no value and it was mostly because most of the charts we were looking at were far away from it um, they weren't in and out of it nowadays with the market being in, in, in a little bit of uh, shambles maybe a good word shambles uh, we are hanging around the 500 period moving average so it is important to me so this is the 500 period moving average right there the green dots and the red dots, I would like to say that's some secret sauce. I would like to say that that is something magical. I would like to say you can't have it, but that's not true. I would like to say this is unique to hit and run candlesticks, but it is not. Um, it truly, I, 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 I kid you not, it is truly nothing more than the 17 exponential moving average. There's nothing magic about the 17 exponential moving average. It's just what I choose to use. I choose to use it because it's kind of in between the 21 exponential. It's kind of in between the 20 simple. It kind of, you know, I don't want to scan for each one of those. So I just chose, just use the 17 EMA. That's all. And that is the reason I use the 17 EMA. Okay. Um, and we have just figured out a clever way in TC2000 on how to turn the dots green when price is above it and a clever way to turn the dots red when price is below it. That's all we've done with that. Okay. So, uh, let's, 
Let's see, CC, is that necessary to understand the candlesticks in deep like a rising star? No, uh, it is not necessary. Um, you could, uh, there you go. Let's do this one. There you go. Uh, let's get rid of that trend line. There you go. You do not need anything, um, anything at all uh, on your charts other than candlesticks. That, that would be a purist. Now, I, I can't say that I know anybody in my 35 years of trading that is that much of a purist. Um, I know people that have what we call a naked chart. That's a naked chart right there. Uh, just the candlesticks. But I don't know anybody that that's all they use. Okay. I've never run across anybody that uses just candlesticks in my 35 years of trading. And I, I got to tell you, I've met a whole lot of people. Uh, so you don't have to have it, have any other moving averages. Uh, trading for me is like layers, layers. So price action, which is candlesticks, is a layer. Uh, the T-line to me is a layer. The, uh, what we call the trend indicator is a layer in trading. And um, I think, personally, I think everybody needs layers. I don't think like I said, I don't know anybody, not a soul that trades purely on candlestick signals, but you don't need any of this to understand uh, uh, rising star, doji, bullish and golf. You don't need any of this. No, nope. not at all. All right, let's come over here. Walter, how about the 13? If you want to use the 13 EMA, you go right ahead, Walter. I have found extreme success with using the 17. That doesn't mean the 13 EMA wouldn't work, by the way. Let me tell you a little uh, trader's tip in trading, okay? When you're trading, uh, if we were to do this, watch list, all U.S. stocks. There's, uh, on TC2000, just click on all U.S. stocks, there's 6,049 stocks that come up. Um, anybody that's been trading any length of time, especially successful, success, successful people, uh, will tell you about half the charts on this list are garbage. They're junk. So what you want to do is, uh, you, you want to take this garbage. Let me, let me do this here. Let me see if I can try this right here. Let's make this a, uh, circle and let's make it blue. And let's make this my entry, okay? Let's make this my entry window over here. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take this entire list right here. Let's make that yellow. Yellow just shows up really good on black. We're gonna make that entire 600 or 6,340 nine uh, watch list there. We're going to move that to my entry area. And the way we're going to do it is we are going to layer charts, layer ticker symbols to what I want. Now I know, I know in a matchbox what I want. Okay. What I want it, it, it's not bigger than a bread box. It's the size of a matchbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all these stocks and I'm going to filter through them. However you filter through them. I feel I have my own way of filter through, through filtering through them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out uh, any junk junk to me is we'll start with lack of volume. Um, put an N in there, <laughs> something like that. We're going to talk, we're going to look at money. I don't trade anything under a dollar. And these days I hardly trade anything 
under 10 bucks, okay? So I'm gonna filter that out. Well, that just cut this down by a, a, a buku amount, buku amount. From there, I'm still driving to my entry. What we're gonna talk about tonight is my entry. That's what we're gonna talk about. Everything I do is drawn to the trendicator and the T-line. It's all drawn to this area right there. Everything. Everything I buy long, everything I buy short. So to Walter's question, how about the 13 EMA? Why not? Why not? I don't disagree with that. What you're doing is you're pulling everything to your area. So if you're trading the 13 EMA, your area is probably going to be, we'll use my layers, but we're going to replace the 17 with the 13. So that means your area will be about right here. About right there. That's about your area. Where my area is just a little bit bigger. Incorporates the 17, okay? So there is nothing at all wrong with using the 13. The trick is to pull everything to it. So if somebody looks here, let's, let's go find this chart right here. If somebody talks in our trading room says, wow, very, V-E-R-Y, had a great day. Do you know that I could care less? I do not care. I, I don't mean to be rude, but I do not care. Number one, it has zero for volume. 3,000 shares of volume traded back here does not cut it. Big volume today, don't care. Price has moved. There's, here's, there, right there is the last trendicator dot. And price is up here. I do not care. I can't trade that. You can't trade everything. I can't trade everything. So you have to know what you want. And I know what I want fits in a matchbox, not in a bread box, not in the cupboard, not in the ice box. It fits in a matchbox. Trader's tip. Think about that. Trade something small. Learn. Don't learn everything. Don't learn everything. Okay. Learn what makes sense to you. And if the 13 makes sense to you, by all means, use it. I'm all for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John, is the trendicator the same as the red and green dots in the indicator? Yes, it is. Uh, at what time do you enter a trade? I'll tell you what, we'll talk about that a little later, okay? Um, Sam uses a T-line for entry and exit. I think that's a great idea. True story. Uh, let's go look at Apple just for because it's Apple. Okay, uh, let's go look at this chart and let's get rid of price. Let's get rid of price. Mm, you know what I want to do? Let's look at this chart. Okay, and this is Apple. The red dots, the trendicator, this is the T line. This is the eight exponential moving average. It is not the 17. So let's take a look at this. This is something I've threatened to do for years. Um, every time I call Ed up and talk about it, he hangs up on me. <laughs> he laughs. In the beginning, he laughed. Now he hangs up. So. Sam says, I use the T-line for entry and exit. Just think about this. Look at red dot to red dot. You would have made money. Red dot to red dot. You would have made money. That, as long as that's trending, you would have made money. Red dot to red dot. You would have made money. I could keep going. How about, how about green dot... To green dot, you would have made money short. How about, I'm saying this, <laughs> I'm saying this actually backwards. How about green dot to red dot? There we go. Green dot to red dot, you would have made money. How about 
red dot to green dot, you would have made money. Okay. Here's what I've what I've 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 asked Ed to do because Ed is the the um, the father, the mom, and the children of live trading alerts, one of the tools that I use. And I have approached Ed about, Ed, do you think you could make a black box, just auto trade, a basket of stocks, enter when that, it, this was even before the trend indicator, but something similar to this. When the dot turned green and close it when the dot turned red, great idea, but he said no. <laughs> It, very labor intensive. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so, Sam, I totally agree with you. I think that is a fabulous idea. Absolutely fabulous. Just take something like that. What if you did that with something like the Trendicator itself? Boom, right there. Look at that. What if you did that? Holy cow. See the, the what might happen here? What do we say? Uh, green dot to red dot. Look at the distance that covered and the amount of money you would have made. Uh, whoa, red dot. Holy moly. Gr green dot to red dot. Yipers. That's how I use the turn indicator uh, in a way. Not that long, uh, but very similar. Uh, to that, similar to that sort of setup. All right, look, let's let's get back to what we were looking at. I do apologize. I do get sidetracked. I know that. Um, we'll get there. Um, SPY. Why did I close RCL? Because we are sitting down here at the 500 and the 200 period moving average. Now, I use a lot of, let me rephrase that. I always say it that way. I use certain moving averages a lot, okay? They are, they are a massive part of my trading. They are huge in my trading. And one of the reasons why I like them is you can use them in scanning and it really is easy. It, it truly is. Oh, don't worry about it, Carol. It truly is easy. So I use them a lot. Also, I've discovered that price will change at major moving averages uh, a high probability amount of times, high problem amount of times. Not every time, but there's a very high probability there will be a disturbance at a major moving average. And I happen to think that uh, the 50, the 200, the 500, and I happen to think what we call the dotted deuce is a major moving average. Um, so those are the ones I use. The trend indicator, that's just kind of in the middle of the 20, which is a moving major moving average. Um, I, I, I think every trader in the world has probably used the 21 exponential, bounce back and forth, trying to find some perfect moving average and you never have. But you've decided that just stick with one and that's the perfect one and that's what i've done okay so i use moving averages so what i'm going to do is i'm going to realize today that i'm up 43 percent or 20 goals with rcl we're sitting here on the 50 the 200 and the 500 period moving average if i come over here and look at uh another indicator in tc 2000 uh, T2122, you can see we're buried in the oversold area. That doesn't mean anything other than we could bounce. Possible. That's all it is. It's just a great big possible. Now, remember I said that I was up, and we're going to go look at some other charts, I promise you. Uh, remember I said I was up 43%, uh, um, something like... Uh, I can actually tell you if I just come over here and do this, uh, do this, uh, 740 bucks. So let's come over here. So, whoops, hit this right here. Nope, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. 
<sighs> Sometimes I get button pushing crazy. So, uh, $740. This is on the account that I have. I, I, I trade, I've got three different accounts that I'm trading. The one account that owned this particular stock is, is a $55,000 account. Let's call it that, okay? And this equals 20 goals, all right? If I was to keep this overnight, I've got a bucket load of risk on my hands. 740 bucks is a bucket load of risk for a $5,000 account. Uh, that, is, that is like, wow. So I took my profits. Can it go down lower? Sure it can. Am I gonna, could I miss out on some? Sure I can. But I eliminated risk and I'm headed to doubling that account. Now, we are very, very oversold in T2123. Does not guarantee a bounce, but there is some probability that there's there might be a little bit of bounce up here. That doesn't mean that RCL is going to get uh, bullish on me or anything, but I did not want to to mess with 740 reasons to to risk the trade, okay? Another chart that I pay attention to a lot is this T2123. And the 15 minute chart is still bearish. It is not bullish. Notice where price action is on the red dots. On the 60 minute, notice where price action is compared to the red dots. And it is still bearish. We have not had a bullish signal yet. Okay, so let's go back over here. Now, let's talk about um, this trade, RCL. And then I've got a list of other trades we can look at too. I'm going to get rid of this right here. You see this line, uh, this turquoise line? So far, I have not told you what this is. And I've done that on purpose. It's just the three exponential moving average. Now, don't confuse what I look for on a 3.8 trap with that line. When I am looking for a 3.8 trap, this 3 EMA, it is actually the average of, yeah, average of the high okay but that's not the strategy we're particularly looking at tonight although that strategy might cross paths okay if anyone likes the 3-8 trap uh doug with right way option by the way i think on the 19th of this month is teaching a class on the 3-8 trap if you've never been to one of his classes well you're missing out on about the eighth wonder of the world, to tell you the truth. Um, so anyway, last price, exponential to three EMA. All I want, because I'm not going to leave this up here. I don't leave this up here during the day. When I scan for trades, what I'm looking for trades, what I'm looking for for this strategy is... Now, the title of tonight, and I purposely did this because this is what people look for. They want, say, a cross of moving averages, but you don't have to have a cross of moving averages. In fact, I would argue that there is a separate but close to strategy trading the T-line, both long and short, without a cross what you're trading is the trend the momentum in the trend okay if you get a cross you're actually losing momentum in my mind i i know that doesn't go with the with the typical general thinking trader tip number two if you always trade the general trade thinking then you'll probably be no more than average. Think out of the box. Don't think what everybody else does. Think out of the box, okay? So here's what happens. Uh, well, we can take it right here. See how that blue line there crossed up over the T line? Oh, me, oh, my, oh, we have a 3-8 cross. Wow, let's get in that. The truth of it is you probably wouldn't own it right here. The average trader is not going to own it right here. 
And I'm going to bet that most people in this room don't, will not, and don't own that, own RCL right here, nor any other chart. You're going to wait till you see something bullish. You're going to wait till it breaks out. That is, I think that is good thinking, actually. And that is, that is general thinking. But the general thinking we want to think about of not doing is worrying about that cross. Now, in hindsight, if you were in it, look at the money you would have made on the SPY. But on the other hand, isn't that cross supposed to generate momentum? Isn't that cross supposed to generate bullishness, right? Well, where in the hell did it go? So what I would like to offer is a strategy tonight where it does not cross, okay? Now, for this strategy to work, what's going to happen is every trader that's looking for every candlestick that, that, um, that, <laughs> that bounces, just jitters, this trade's not for you. Because um, here's what you will be looking for right here. Um, say RCL is down. And I'm just using RCL. It could be any chart. I, it, this just happens to be the chart up on the screen. Okay, so I'm not, don't, oh, well, I would never, I would never enter RCL because it's a cruise ship and based on the economy, it's going to go down. Please, it's just a chart. All right. So don't get all, don't, don't get all, um, well, I wouldn't do that because of this. All right. Uh, don't, don't, don't go there. You see candles like this, traders are going to start buying this up. And then what they're going to do is they're going to see this candle pop up. They're going to start buying that candle up because they are thinking, whoa, I'm in early. That boat's going to float. We're going to the Caribbean. Ba -ba 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 Boom, seems some poor old Jimmy Buffett music. We're going to have a great time, right? Wrong. You're not. Stop being so quick on the gas pedal. Look at the trend. Look, forget price for a moment. I love price. I think price is king. But price is the death of most traders. Do you know that? Have you ever thought about that? Price is the death of most traders. Because traders, as you become a trader, you are actually a pretty good trader in the beginning. And then you start learning more, and then you become a bad trader. When you become a bad trader, you try to become a good trader by going faster. When you go faster, you start paying more attention to price. When you start paying more attention to price, what happens is you start boom, 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 boom. You, 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 go, you go spastic on the, on, the, on the charts. You go from a weekly to a daily to a hourly to a 15 minute to a five minute to a two minute to a one minute until you just blow yourself up because you're so busy following price. Stop following price for a moment, just a moment. Okay, just a moment. What is that chart doing? Only pay attention to this blue line and that black line. The T line, black, that's the three. You could use the two. Years ago, this was actually, we actually taught this with the two. It was actually taught with, with the two. When I was teaching this, the T-line in Steve's room years ago, it was with the two EMA. I've since changed that over the years because I realized the two is just too fast. Just too fast. There's sometimes I think the three is too fast too. But look what the, the momentum is doing. Look what the trend is doing. Forget what price is doing. Forget it. For a moment. Just for a moment. Okay, so when we see the trend moving down and then we see this right here, boom, that moving average move up, notice it hasn't crossed. The momentum is still down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait for that signal, candlestick, price, now look at price. We're going to start shopping for that signal. We're going to enter that when it comes down because it, the continuing the trend, because there's no reversal pattern there, then we're going to make some money. Pretty simple. Another trade that I did that to was GE. 
closed GE today. Closed GE for the same reasons I closed uh, RCL. This was in that smaller account. That smaller account, I can't take as many liberties with a $5,000 account as I can with my bigger account. I can take more liberties with that larger account. With a smaller account, trader's tip, with a smaller account, you have to think about your liberties that you take. In other words, the smaller you are, the more strict you have to be with rules. The smaller account you have, the better trader you have to be. I'm sorry to say it that way. You know, you think, well, jeepers, I've got a $180,000 account. I'm a good trader. I took it from $100,000. Not denying that. Not denying that at all. But somebody with a $180,000 account can take more liberties because they've got more cushion. Somebody that has a $5,000 account, well, you can't take those liberties. And I don't care who you are. Uh, I happen to think that I'm a pretty good trader. I'm pretty fair, you know. I can hold my own. But on this particular account, it's just a 5,000, a little over 5,000 now, like 5,600, I think. 5,600 account, I can't take liberties. So I have to be more strict, okay? So why did I take profits on GE? Because I can't risk, I think it was $240 trade on a $5,000 account. That's a risk. So don't worry about price. Who cares about price right now? Take a look at the overall trend. Now, this time, let's take a look at the trend indicator. Let's add that. Notice how the trend indicator is red. And by the way, I kind of live and die by that. That sort of tells me the trend right there. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hardcore. Is it red or green? Man, I, my mouse just freaked out. Red or green, right? So it's red. So this chart cannot be traded long. If there is a candlestick down here, uh, we'll, we'll do something like this. We'll put a doji in. Everybody loves that. If it does that, I can't be long in that trade. Doesn't mean that sometimes I don't take trades like that, okay? But this is one of these trades that if you have a $5,000 account, you can't take that liberty. Trader's tip. Can't take that liberty. If you have a bigger account, you can take that liberty. Because this trend, this stock is not trending. Smaller accounts need the trend. Uh, everybody's probably heard the trend is your best friend. It is one of your best friends in trading. Yes, it is. And smaller accounts can't take the risk trying to pick bottoms. Smaller accounts need to go with the trend. For the most part, I was talking long right there. Now let's go back to this chart. So see how see how the and then I'll come up and answer some questions here okay see how we're these two three moving averages are stacked moving down see how we rallied up here that means there had to be some kind of pull up PBU pull up P, pull pull PUB PUO pull up opportunity something like that now what we're going to do is watch for that sell signal we're going to trade that trade. And that's just what I did with GE. Exactly what I did with GE. So let's put price back here. Now, I'm, I've looked at nothing but shorts here. We can look at longs. Uh, I have no problem with that. Um, we probably, well, we need to. Because we just might get a little bit of a bounce. But you see how that works right there? See how we're down? You don't have to get in it here. You don't have to hurry up. I better get into G. Hurry, 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 hurry. Because if you get short GE, what's going to happen? It's going to come up. You're going to get out of GE. You're, you're going to go sideways on the trade. You're going to lose money. Then GE is going to put in a bearish engulf. And then you're going to get into the GE. And it's going to move down. And it's going to move up again. And you're going to get slaughtered again. Your timing is now completely off. It's going to take you probably a week to get back into timing, okay? Don't be in a hurry. Follow the momentum. Follow the trends, all right? So you can see here, let's get into GE. Boom, we did. Three days. Poof, there we are. 
nice actually I think it was yesterday I got in GE uh, nice little trade there uh, half a dozen goals uh, toward doubling the account okay let me grab some questions here I don't want to get too far off oh I tell you what I'm gonna start right there if I miss your question please type it again I'm not ignoring you okay uh, John trendicator dot sound wonderful for trading uh, positions up or down how would you manage sideways choppy market that's simple don't be in a choppy sideways market that's a great question John that might be the best question of tonight right there and tonight's not even over I'm worried about excess of red green switching because because uh, me to draw down in a sideways market is due to excess of trading with little to no profit all right I want to bring this over here for you for a second This is called, I'm going to get, let me give you the link to this. All right. I don't know that this is, uh, Ed could correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. That this is not out on the website anywhere. Uh, it was kind of privately done for me uh, in a way. Um, we have since shared it with everybody, but Ed kind of did it for me because I'm all about the whole doubling in 365 days or in a year. My year, let me get rid of a little bit of house cleaning here. My year is actually 210 days. That's because I'm gonna account for weekends, I'm gonna account for natural market holidays, and account for days that I simply just wanna take off. Works out to about 210 days. Yours is gonna be close to, uh, close to that. Yours will be close. For, for purposes of this, just use 210. So a $5,000 account, I only need to make $24 a day average, $24 a day, uh, or about $120 a week, okay? $120 a week. You don't have to close out something every day. I'm not talking about day trading. But if you do that, you'll double your money. Now, this is net. This is net. I know you're going to have losses. Now, I just saw, I'm going to have to do the math real quick here. Um, RCL, what did I say it was? $740, divide that by, let's round that up to $24. Uh, 30, excuse me, a little over 30 goals. I just bought my, my, I just bought myself some losses and I'm okay. Because all I've got to do is average $24 a day to double my account. Well, I just made, that's one goal right here. That's one goal. Okay. One 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 go on RCL I made 30 goals okay so what I did is I bought myself some loss cushion I'm okay I'm good I'm happy I'm on the road I'm cruising I'm partying I'm doing the right stuff as far as I'm concerned so, what does this have to do with John's, John, John's question that I can't find now? Uh, John's question. Uh, sideways market. Let's go to that. Uh, I know it had something to do with sideways market uh, and choppiness. Look, you're going to have to learn to recognize that, okay? I can show it to you. I can teach it to you. Um, I, can, I can do all that. Uh, that's not what I want. But I have to be honest. This is one of those things. That's what I want. This is one of those things that you have to learn this on your own through experience, through a little bit of time. Do you know that when we, 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 um, one of the things to trial people, people that take a trial of hit and run candlesticks. Um, they're sent an email in a, uh, a grouping of emails, and we send an email to them that tells them, look, honestly, it's not quite as brutal as, as I'm about to be. If you think you're going to take a trial for 30 days and walk out to be Joe Trader, you're mistakenly wrong. You are horribly wrong. You are incredibly wrong. You're going to lose. The trial really is just to see if you mesh with us. That's all. 
because you should be someplace where you mesh with that person. You, you shouldn't be someplace where you dislike that person uh, or anything like that. You should be with someplace, someplace that somebody explains things the way you, you can understand them. I may or may not be that person. I don't know. I have had many people that think that I'm no good. I straight up honest with you. But if you think 30 days, you're going to get it. You're not. You're losing. Sorry. It's not going to happen. You're not going to do it with me. You're not going to do it with Joe Schmo trading room. You're not going to do it with anybody. And to think you are is a load of crap. All right. Now, right there, I might have turned somebody off and somebody just left. But that's me. And if you don't mess with me, that's cool. I'm okay with that. I am me. I'm happy with me. I think I do a good job. And I think I can help a lot of traders. Let's talk about what I'm trying to talk about now. You see how this market, look at those red dots. Take a step back. Take a step back. Can you see the sideways in that chart? Don't be there. Look for charts that are trending. If it helps you, draw lines. Now, I don't draw trend lines like most everybody else. Look at that. Why would you want to be long this chart right now? You wouldn't want to be. What you want to be is long on charts that are clear, decisive, without question. A low, a high, a higher low, a higher high. Maybe even another lower high and a higher high. You want to be with charts, not charts that put in a bullish engulf down here. No, you don't want to be in charts like that. See right here? You don't really want to be in charts right here. Now, you know, if, if that gave you a buy signal, I might, might not argue with that. But by and large, if you're somebody that has sideways issues, you don't want to be there. You want this chart to prove itself that it's trending. Now, trade. Because if a chart can make one, two, three, four, five, six moves, there's a good chance, it's not guaranteed, there's a good chance that that chart has changed its trend direction. It has gone from this right here. Sorry, I, my mouse kind of messing up. I don't know what this is all about. Happens to me when I put in long days though, I know that. So you may have gotten some great little bullish, you know, whoopie do reversal candle pattern sort of thing down there. That's not the trade. The trade is in the trend. What happens unfortunately and the market has trained us to do this. And I'm sad to say that, but the market has trained us lately to do this. And it's because of the volatility. We feel that we've got to get in in a hurry so we can make that money because it's not going to give it to us again. Not true. Not true at all. If you wait patiently, you and when I say wait patiently, Give yourself an hour to look for charts that are trending. Give your, if you're, if you're a good, um, um, uh, if you have a handle on scanning, give yourself five minutes. I have an amazing handle on scanning. Okay. I, I, I'm okay to say that. Uh, it, it's one of the things that I do best is I can scan for charts. I know what I want to look for and I can create that scan and I can find them. I could find you a handful of charts that are trending, even in this horrible market. It would be a small handful that meet would meet my criteria for a trade. Now you have to learn patience for that entry. But what happens is most traders don't have the patience. What they do, ah, damn it, it's not doing anything. So you go out and find a trade. Boom, 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 boom. You just find a trade because you have to trade because no patience. 
So you have to learn as a trader when things start moving sideways. Take a look at the market. I'm a big market trader, by the way. Not that I trade the SPY, but I use the SPY as my guideline. So if you look at the SPY, you can see the green and the red, right? One of the places that I personally think, and it is from personal experience, also the coaching I do, I do a fair amount of private coaching, and uh, everybody that becomes a member, by the way, uh, we've started coaching. So if you become a member, um, you know, you an hour of coaching. Uh, anybody that is a member, by the way, if you, you know, if you want to do an hour, let me know. We'll, I, I enjoy it very much. So we, we can handle that, okay? That you haven't had an hour, we can do that. So one of the places that I've learned through coaching and through experience is one of the most worst trading areas for me and many traders is when the turn starts or ends or starts or ends, whatever you want to do, the turn, okay? This is the worst place in the world to trade. And that is because that's where um, sideways starts because you get this, uh, let's see here, you get this, Oh, I'm bullish. You know, you're panting like a dog. <laughs> I'm bullish. And then you get this bearishness. Huh? Woof, woof. You know, you look dog stupid now. Oh, should I be bullish? Should I be short? What should I do? All that does is create sideways. That creates that volatility, that choppiness. So the simple answer is don't be there. Well, who, who was it? Miyagi? Best way not to get hit by a chair or a stick or whatever it was, don't be there. So when you see that trend start, that turn rather, don't be there. Let that trend work. Let that momentum work. Let that white line, which is the T line, move up because price will move it up. And then wait for the sell signal and trade that trend. The trend started right here, but you never knew that. Nobody knows that. Nobody on earth knows that this is going to trend, start trending down right here. Nobody. Nobody on earth knows it's going to be start trending up right here. And this is what we have to have kind of a come to Jesus meeting with ourselves about. We're not that smart. Okay? Really, you really need to have a come to Jesus meeting with yourself and realize that, wow, I'm not that smart to call that's where it's going to turn. And the, and the day you can do that, your trading will change because now you're going to start looking for momentum for trading trend, moving up. I probably should be yellow there. I like yellow moving up. You'll see this wobble. You'll get it. You'll figure out that, hey, I need to wait for that to break out. And look what you have right here. But you have, the, have to have the patience and you have to have the education, the time to figure this out. I hope nobody here thinks, a few years ago, I took a $5,000 account, turned it into $80,000, uh, 14, 16, 18 months. I, I can't remember now. Uh, we'll call it 16 in the middle. Um, I couldn't do that the first five years. I mean, I dreamed about it <laughs> a lot. I even spent the money a couple of times. <laughs> I already bought something thinking I could do that. No, you can't do that. It's going to take time. It takes time to learn these things. Trader's tip. Don't be there, John. Simple answer. Watch, watch, uh, what was that movie? Miyagi and Karate Kid. Watch that scene. Don't be there. Okay, that, that, anyway, sorry, long way to get there. Anyway, let's see, uh, where am I? Um, let's see, John, that was what I do, sir. Do you use stochastics? No, sir, I don't use stochastics. Um, I used to use stochastics. Uh, I don't like stochastics, all right? I'm going to be, you know, straight up honest with you. Um, uh, most indicators um, are crutches. Most indicators are crutches, which means that you're using them for a crutch. When you're 
legs start to go out from under you, you will look at your crutch and you will make a decision on your crutch. That usually doesn't turn out well, okay? Now, let me give you a scenario where I would use stochastics. And just so, just so everybody is clear, let me be straight up honest with you here. Number one, I do not use stochastic. You, you can add, ask Ed. He can probably see what scans I have. I do not have stochastics anywhere in my scans. I do not have stochastics anywhere on my charts. I do use MACD in some of my scans. It's in the background. It's nothing I look at, nothing at all. And what I'm looking for is simply a trending MACD. That's it. Okay, so I do use that in the background. You never see it. I never see it. It's in the background of scans. Um, I hope that clarified a little bit. But I do not use stochastics, no. Let's see, John, I'm going to get to these questions. Why not wait for a reversal? I'm not sure what you mean there, uh, Frank. Why not wait for a reversal? Uh, you need to give me a ticker symbol. I'll answer that question if I knew what we were talking about. Uh, I know what you're talking about right now. Um, either GE or RCL. Now I know. Let me give you an exact reason. All right, here it comes. Are you ready? Here goes. RCL. I got out for 740 reasons on a $5,000 account. Enough said. On GE, I, it was like 200 and I don't know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. $230 profit on a $5,000 account. Enough said. Okay? If you want to trade different, you go right ahead. But that is exactly the reason. The second, the re, the, what made me think of that is because the SPY is sitting on the 500 and the 200 period moving average that begs for a bounce. While the bounce may not go anywhere, okay, that begs for a bounce. T2122 has got its nose buried in the oversold area. May not go anywhere, but that begs for a bounce. So I put away $900 in my pocket today on a $5,000 account, which was a darn good trade, if you ask me. Let's see, perhaps uh, switch to weekly charts. Uh, completely agree with all of you. Perhaps one dot color in a row required to switch to a weekly chart uh, for validation. Maybe appearance trend confirmed by support. Sure, John. Um, so if you're not, you know, you know, take what John is saying there and take what maybe Frank is saying. Um, I mentioned something in the room today and I'm thinking about in the trading room, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about that. Ask everybody in the trading room that if they would put together a trade plan, share it with me. I will only share it with people that share a trade plan. And, but it's things like that. And while John there is talking about maybe we switch to weekly charts, that might work for you, but that does not work for me. I'm not a weekly chart trader. I'm what they call a profit trader. Did you know the, the original name of uh, Hit and Run Candlesticks was Trading for Profit Hit and Run Candlesticks? And um, we, we switched the name a few years ago just to hit and run candlesticks, but the original name trading for profit. And that's what it's all about. It's not about calling the top and calling the bottom and maximizing the trade. Not for me. It could be for somebody, but not for me. I'm all about um, hitting the ball, getting it out on base, and then letting something else hit me around the bases. I'm, I'm all about moving my account up in uh, a couple of days to five days to maybe 10 days. And we'll do a, a triple, maybe 15 days. Okay. So the weekly chart doesn't cut it for me for that. 
I look at the weekly chart sometimes, but I don't trade from the weekly chart. And uh, take John there. If the weekly chart works for you or somebody, um, then you should write a trade plan on it and share it with us. Um, one, I will only accept it from members. And two, I will only share it with members that are members and they have to have supplied a trade plan as well. You don't get a free ride here on this one. Um, but I think that would be one of the uh, best self, self-made classes, self-made by everybody here that you could, you could possibly go to and just see what everybody else looks at. And you can pick and choose what makes sense to you because if it doesn't make sense to you, it's not gonna work for you. It just will not work for you, okay? Anyway, thanks, John. Great, great idea, by the way. Uh, let's see, so you're not going to take a short trade if the three exceeds the eight. No, I didn't say that, John. I'm just sharing a strategy with you, or Jim. No, I didn't say that, Jim. I'm just sharing a strategy with you. Is this indicator available in TradingView? <coughs> Um, I don't know, CC. Um, what is your preferred time frame? Daily is my preferred time frame. What's your email address? Uh, BR549. You'd have to tell me why you want it, Don. Um, it's on the website. <laughs> Sorry. BR549. Young people won't know what that is. <laughs> Everybody that's of a little bit of age just chuckled on that one. <laughs> uh, 30 goals. Let's talk about that. And then I, I've got some charts I want to look at, okay? I really do. 30 goals. I'm all of, my number one goal is to double my account, uh, CJ. No more and no less. Okay? I want to say that again. No more and no less. I, I, ha I have no desire to go more than double my account. Now, before everybody wipes up the Coke that you just spit all over your monitor, let me explain something. If you can put together a trade plan and you can double your account, I promise you, you'll be able to do more because you will develop trading skills beyond your imagination. Absolutely beyond your imagination. Always, don't get greedy, just double your account. If your account starts at $5,000, just use that because it's there. That's the standard number in there. You can change that number to anything you want. If you start at $5,000 and say you, you get it to uh, $8,000, well, why not do this? Why not come over here, replace that five with an eight, hit enter, and lo and behold, now all you have to do is $38 average a day profit, net profit, okay? So you get that to $10,000, so let's change that. $10,000, now you have to do 47, we'll call it 48, okay? You just stick with that number. Don't get carried away, don't get, don't get greedy. And what you will discover is you will learn something about trading that is absolutely phenomenal. And you will more than double your money. Okay. Now it may take, it may take, I, I think it was, I, I don't know, 5,000, 80,000 in 16 months. I had it doubled in, a, in an easy year, but it just, it just kept going because I kept scaling up. All right, uh, I've got an account now that started in March with $100,000. It's worth, I think, 170. Oh, do I have it up here? Uh, it's under. It's a little. It's about 168, $168,000 right now. Um, I'm not too worried about March on doubling it. I'm not too worried at all. Um, well on its way to doing that, and this is exactly what I do right here. This is exactly what I do. And I scale. I scale with, with uh, 
size of contracts or size of shares. So this is called goals, CJ, goals. Okay. Um, I'll PM you a picture that you should help oh, find it. Don't clog up the chat. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I did for three months and found I didn't know Jack. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> there's, there's, there's days even now I feel like I don't know anything about this trading business. Uh, Rick's not known. No, Kevin, you're right. I'm not known for sugarcoating. Nope. That's right, South Bay. You're you. I'm me. You are exactly, exactly right. Walter uses the 3A13 EMAs. When I start stacking them, I use as a buy. And when they stack down, I use as a sell. Um, the simplicity, the cleansliness, I applaud you, Walter. Walter, I, I think that's a fabulous idea. That's actually what I do, just different moving averages. Um, how important is the steepness of the angle of the trend? Do you monitor that? Uh, it's not so much. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's go look at a chart. X is one of the charts I'm looking at as a long, by the way. You can see that the momentum here, look at the three. And by the way, the three is never on my charts during the day. And this is not the three high members. This is the th three exponential moving average. For this strategy, that's all I want. It has nothing. It has, I'm not looking for a three eight trap here. However, you're going to find that just about everything is a three eight trap. Okay. But I'm not going after a three eight trap. What I'm looking for is momentum, and I'm just going to look for price action below the highest high close to the T-line. That's all, which turns into the 3A trap, okay? Those that have never taken a class with Doug, um, I'm going to put a link up here if anybody's interested. I should have done this earlier. I'm sorry for not doing it earlier. There you go. You really should take the class. There's only eight left, eight spots left on this, by the way. And I, I'm not making that up. Here it is right there. Three eights coaching, Doug Campbell, three eight trap, uh, eight spots. That's it. So uh, not like I made it up. <laughs> um, let's see here. So let's look at X. Um, and um, I forgot what the quest question was. Where did I go wrong here? I hate it when I do that. Oh, angle of the trend. It's not the angle of the trend I'm concerned with. It's the angle of the price. So, you know what? Let me do it with this. My trend is the green dots. That's my trend, by the way. The red dots. Red dots and green dots, that's my trend. I don't draw trend lines like this as a rule doesn't mean that I don't do that, but I'm not going to do that. Now, I may put that on the chart, but that's not my go-to. It's not what I'm going to look at. My trend is going to be these green dots. It's pretty rare for that trend, pretty rare, pretty rare, to get all parabolic like price is, all right? So what I'm actually looking for is how about the angle of price? Now I'm looking for the angle of price to have a meeting with my trend. We had a pretty good meeting right here. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a buy. Here, notice how the three dip below the eight. This is the, this is the strategy I'm trying to show tonight. This is not the chart you want. Just because it crosses up, you don't want that. I don't care if X goes to $5,000 from here. That is not what you want in this strategy. That is just one chart. What you want is a chart that's, that's, that's humming along. There you go. Hum right along. That would have been a good buy right here. I didn't buy that though. X has too much drama in it. I'm maybe getting interested because the drama is out of it now. And there we go. Nice little buy signal right here. Okay. 
So it's not, it's not the trend, it's not the angle of my trend I'm so much concerned about because it rarely gets out of hand. It's the angle of price that gets out of hand and that's out of hand right there, okay? Um, let's look at UPS, short. See how we rallied up? The moving average is kind of kissed right up here. This is looking short. Look right here. Look how beautiful that is. You never got the cross. That's because the momentum is still down. So let it move down. Let it, let it prove itself. Now let's look for a trade in here. For those that are, are keen on a 3H trap, you can see that. 3H trap right there. Okay, three trap right here. Let's look at another long. Here, here's a long for you. Um, <laughs> SQQQ, that's, that's a long that kind of, well, it, not kind of, it, it says the market's going down. Now, I think we're a little bit oversold, so just be a little cautious. This chart is setting up pretty nice. Now, we did pierce the T-line right here, but I, I can't help not to show this chart. This is just a nice chart. Um, we did pierce the T-line. So for my scanning purposes, this actually would not show up on my scan right here. So, you know, let's look the other way just a little bit. And you can see how it's doing what I want it to do. It just, it pierced below just a little bit. I, I, can, I can find another. Here's socks. I think socks is better. Nope, socks is not better. Um, E-L. There we go. Look at EL here. <laughs> I was looking in the wrong column. Oh, well, this is the short column I was looking at. Look, look how, just go back and take your eyes off the hard right edge for a second. Rub your eyes. Just take, take a breath, okay? All right. Look how we cross down. Let it go. Don't get in a hurry. Leave that alone right there. Leave that alone. Let it go. It'll come back. Price broke out above. The three stayed with the T-line. Now let's look at that short. Look at the money that could have been made right there. Look, if you want to still be in it, you can still be in it. That's your business. You're, it's your money. You're, tra you're the trader. Me, I'm out of it. I'm, I'm drinking a cold beer, you know, doing something good. It moves back up. Oh, look, it just might be a trade again. Maybe, just maybe. Um, let's look at a long, another long. Uh, UV, not a lot of longs right now, I got to tell you. Not a lot. Look at UVIX. UVIX, yeah, look at that. Leave it alone. Now, this strategy is about leaving the cross alone. That's what this strategy is about. This strategy is about allowing the momentum to work, allowing the bulls to get their way. That's what this strategy is about. See how we pull back, but look where the three is compared to the T line, never cross below it. To me, that is one of those layers of strength. And it's only strength because price came back immediately. Now let's look at it. See how we have a low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Look at our trend. We're rocking. We're rocking. Now the trouble, the problem is that most traders can't let that go. Most traders, you, you, you're, you're thumbing through charts like this, not like that. You're thumbing through charts. I, I see this all the time. You know, I, I, can almost, I can almost pick out the people that do this because they will, they will come in and they will say, look at, it might not be any today. Uh, let's switch that up to this over here. There we go. Oh, no, not that one. We don't want that one. What do we want? U.S. stocks. There we go. 
People, and we, we already looked at this. People come in the room and they will say, look at V-E-R-Y. I know exactly what they did. They pulled up the entire stock market. They went to the best one up and they think they found the coolest chart in the room. I don't care about those charts. Sorry for anybody that's done that recently. This is the most worthless chart to look at than you could, you could even come across. Let it work. Let the setup set up. This is not a setup. All right. Anyway, all right. Questions. Let's see here. Uh, it looks like the angle of the trend is an important indicator. We just went over that. Bob, same reason got out with 177 and a $900 account. Congratulations, Bob. That right there was a sweet trade. Nice. Uh, let me move this out of the way. Let's see. Uh, you're welcome, Frank. Robbie, do you only buy calls or puts or do you uh, apply option strategies? I only buy stock, bullish or bearish, and I only buy calls and puts. I do not get fancy with strategies, anything like that. I want to share for a second why, all right? Um, one... I don't want to learn them, to be honest with you. Okay, that, that probably is the number one reason. I don't want to. I, I, I would rather go work in my yard than after 35 years, spend time learning about an iron condor. Good Lord. If I want an iron condor, I'm going to go look in, I'm going to go watch a Jurassic Park movie. Seriously, okay? Seriously. Now, or, or go to California, maybe. Um... Let's get off this chart. Just looking at this, making me ill. Um, here's what happens an awful lot. And, and this is a bummer. People that get involved with fancy options, some people, not all people, some people think that that is a savior. Now, Doug at right, right Way Options will tell you that you're a fool. If Well, he won't say that. I will. He, he's the nice one. I'm not the nice one. He, he will tell you a fool. You're a fool. Not you personally, but, you know, traders that do this. He will tell you you are a fool in a kind of way, and you'll feel good about it. Me, I just come right out and say it. But what happens is everybody, not everybody, some traders want to take a shortcut. They don't want to learn about a chart. I assure you, Doug will be the first one to tell you, you better learn how to read a chart. He will tell you that. <laughs> Believe me. Trading a fancy option is not going to save your money. It will hurt you more than help you if you can't read a chart. And that is something that Doug would absolutely agree with me on. So, I would do nothing but lose money if I, if I traded that stuff because I don't know anything about it. The advantage I would have, if maybe you want to call that advantage, is if I took the time to learn all that stuff, I can trade a chart. So my, my, my thing to you, Robbie, and this is directly to you, if you can't trade a chart straight up stock and make a buck, all the fancy options in the world is not going to help you. And that was directly for you because you asked the question. And that was a good, really good question. So thank you. Also keep in mind you are trading options. Reversal can be uh, exceptionally uh, leading to greater uh, losses or quicker. Also keep in mind if you are trading options, reversals can be uh, exceptional leading. Not really, Bill. Not, not really. I, the percentage, perhaps, yeah, but there's nothing misleading about RCL short. Um, here's this chart that I'm long in, WBA. Um, there is nothing misleading about that. I do have options on it, but there's nothing misleading about it. Um, the, the, the percentage uh, is special, yeah. Um, Back to that calculator, and I'm, here's where I'm, I probably should have said this. 
I'm not, I don't want to convert anyone to trading options. Um, you can't do this with stock. Uh, I will, I will call you out if you claim you do. I will want to see your account. I would want to see your, your, um, uh, trading account. I would want to see every dollar spent. Well, just, I want to make sure you didn't put money in it, that sort of thing. But if you said you did that with stock, honestly, I wouldn't believe you because I don't think it can be done. Uh, I really don't. So you're right. I guess you're right, Bill. Now that I think about it, now that I'm answering you, uh, it can be misleading. To double your money, you pretty much have to trade options. Yes, you are correct. Thank you. You are correct. Kevin, DKNG, let's take a look. DKNG. DKNG looking short. It is looking a little bit short here. Let's get rid of that. Let me see what else you wrote. A uh, blue ice failure. Yes, a blue ice failure here. Uh, bought some extra time today. January 24 contracts. Congratulations. That's a nice looking chart. Um, overall, uh, that chart looks absolutely short to me. Let's flag that. Thank you. That's going to be on my hit list. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. So what I would be looking for is targets. I always start with moving averages. It's just what I do. Um, I start with that uh, and then I go from there. So for instance, I look at this moving average. Shazam! I love it. And then we're going to go down a little bit more and I'm going to take a look, you know, put a line in there. And I can see that there's some price action right here, right there. Uh, so uh, I think I'll just leave that alone right there. So those are some pretty good targets to the downside. Super, super nice chart, uh, Bill or Kevin. Very nice chart. Walter, but if there were a car wash, would you never participate in it? I have, or, oh, if there were not a car wash, if it were ever was a crash, would you? I have no, I don't know what you're talking about, Walter. But if there ever was a crash, would you participate? Oh, I see. Um, no, I would not. Good. All right. Interesting question. So uh, let's, let's go to the market here. And let's define a crash. Okay. Let's define it. I, I think that's important. So let's just, we'll define it, my definition for purposes of not arguing. Let's, let's call that a market crash, okay? You know what? Let's go further and let's get past that little number right there because I don't want anybody to think, oh, let's, let's get a crash. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Would I participate? No, I wouldn't. I would not participate. And I would offer that traders that struggle, traders with small accounts, traders that just started, you better get your ass out of the market. You better get your ass out of the market. You better turn, you better go to cash. You better turn your computer off and you better take a trip. Go, go pack your bags, go away for a week. Go away for a week, maybe two weeks. Okay. The average trader cannot participate in this. You cannot, you won't win. If there's one thing I've learned over the years is that if you are a struggling trader, let's be true with ourselves. You can't trade. If you are a new trader, just be honest with yourself here. You don't know how to trade yet. And this kind of trading takes a special kind of person and special rules and special everything. Now, there's going to be somebody that hits a home run, sure. But by and large, most traders will not succeed and they will lose money here. Because here's what's going to happen is if there's a crash, you're going to see a crash. You're going to see an immediate rebound. Or maybe it'll sit here and blah, 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 and then rebound. Because the market knows that the crash is not going to last. Now, what's going to happen? The crash is going to come up. There's going to be some money made 
And what they're going to do is they're going to bounce that market right back down again. That's because all this has to be digested. The average trader cannot trade digestion. And this is something as a struggling trader, as a trader that can't trade, and as a trader that just started, you have to realize. And if you don't realize, you're going to be one of these, what, 95 percenters, 95 percent of all traders that start out trading lose money. 95 percent of all traders that, that start out and lose money blame it on something other than themselves. The market makers can see what I do. No, they cannot. It's rigged. No, it is not rigged. No, it's not. The market is not rigged, despite what anybody might think. Your, your job you go to, that's rigged. Good Lord. It's rigged to pay you as little as possible, to give you as little time off as possible, and for that, and for that CEO to make millions as, as a bonus. That's rigged. The market is not rigged. They cannot see your trade. But 95% of all traders that fail, they never take blame. They think they can trade this. If there's anybody in here, thank me later. All right, there's some conceitedness for you. Thank me later when you think, when this happens, and it, and it very well could happen, okay? In, in a trader's lifetime, it rarely happens, but it could happen. It could. So when it happens and you think back, well, that asshole told me I should not be there because I can't trade. So I'm going to get out. Thank you, asshole. Just send me a note. And right. Thanks, asshole. Appreciate it. All right. Like I said, I'm not the nice guy. I'm the guy who tells the way it is. I hope that was helpful. So if the market crashes, no, I'm not going to participate. I'm going to get out. And I've got four grandbabies within two hours of me and one grandbaby that's, uh, oh, it's a 12-hour drive. I'm going to go visit them, hug and love on them for a little while, make myself feel better because I'm not going to participate in that market. Absolutely not. You're welcome, John. Rick, do you trade options or double your account in stock? No stocks. Stocks can't do it. Uh, Rubber Biscuit. I like that name. I'm going to hit the hay. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, BW, GE, GE. Whew. Running out of energy here, got to admit. Uh, GEC, please. Um, honestly, I see no, is this, that's not right. Uh, GEHC. Oh, there we go. Um, currently, um, I see a watch list. I don't see a trade necessarily uh, today, which uh, that's not what you're asking. I see a chart for the watch list. So what I see is a nice bottom being constructed. Uh, I see a nice rally up. I see a nice pullback. I see the potential of our momentum working in here. I see that potential. But what we need to see is a buy candle. Now, one of the things that I, I hope I explain tonight is don't get in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry, okay? So I like that chart. Does it have volume? Yeah, it has volume. Um, I'm going to flag that chart. I like that chart a lot. Thank you very much. Now here's the way I'm going to look at this. I see this top right here. Now, let's think about this. I'm not going to enter it one penny below that red box. Not going to do it. Because I want to see it prove it. Or blue box. I don't know where I got red out of that. Um, maybe that red dot I was looking at. I'm going to need to see price action bulls you for instance step in now i'm interested in trading it but not really okay i'm not going to trade it here because i see this top i'm not interested in going after this what if i told you that i thought this had a chance of getting about uh, to here okay i'm still not going to buy it right here not in a hundred years let me show you another chart I'm being stubborn about too in a minute. I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait till it breaks out. So what I'm going to do is let's move this up like that. And I'm going to move that right there. 
the bottom right there. And I'm going to put this right, move it over a little bit, about that high, okay? Let's, let's don't get married to that box. It's an area right now. Um, I can't predict that's where price is going or anything. So here's what I'm going to wait for. You go ahead and buy it if you want. You and a million other people, I don't care, drive that price up. Please drive it up. Because I know that the probabilities of a rest or a pullback is amazingly great. Now, I'm going to look at entering that trade. Above all this congestion, I'm going to let this work. I'm going to let it prove. And now, what I'm going to do with an entry, let's say approximately, whoa, I don't know what I did there. Let's do that again. With an entry approximately right there at the bottom, at that middle line, I'm going to be looking for eight, eight and a half percent trade on this and that's exactly how I would trade it for fun let's go look at that weekly chart yeah I like that anyway that's exactly how I would trade that chart nice chart by the way <clears throat> um, I sent you a message on your website um, okay all right suggest you check it out okay i'll do that don um if you like or heard from rick oh thanks ed appreciate it uh, i i i hope some of you take the trial um we'll see if we can make it worth your while uh nicole i'm not sure what you mean by 45 degrees rick look at target target what am i looking at uh how nice that was a trap short absolutely yes let's let's count the ways that might have been a nice short. Very nice. So, nice short. Nice short. I could, I could even, you know, I could see somebody shorting this here. Nice short. I could see, I don't know, I, I, I could see this being short right through here. Short, probably got clobbered, but would have made money there clobbered on the way up beautiful beautiful trainer x beautiful um thanks for the cloud oh, you're welcome i know seven uh do you use futures no john i do not i don't look at futures any on anything um, thanks, South Bay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Nitten, could you look at SE? I sure could. Um, let's see here. SE, if they have potential being bearish, uh, everything has a potential of being bearish. Uh, everything. Um, SE, based on the chart, actually just entered a bullish arena for me just entered a bullish arena and when i say just entered it's it's all about uh it's all about we've changed directions here okay let's see somebody has sent me a message on me okay um so can it every chart has the potential of being bearish every chart has the potential of being long me looking at this chart right now i'm looking at a chart that has turned a little bit to the bullish side. Now, I'm not going to trade this chart. But what I'm looking at is the bottom that it's created. We've got a double bottom here. We've got a... Uh, I'm going to draw another line right here before I come talk about it. There we go. Because I can't mix these two types of lines. That's the reason I do that. Um, we've got a bullish W pattern that it has broken out of, doing the right thing. And now we've up, we've come right up to this top and the 50 period moving average. Yes, it could fail here and it could be short, um, probably not till it drops below those dots turning them green. But for the long side, a breakout here puts us uh, in long contention. And right now, um, 
target wise you know I would probably look at something yeah something about 50 51 dollars for a target up and then from there if it can make it out of there next target would be about 540 so potentially yes short but it's gonna have to cross some lines to be short gonna have to make somebody mad uh, WDC uh, that one's looking kind of sh that one potentially could be short um, it, it's and, and I'm just saying that because of these tops right here the fact is it's trending and I think it's gonna have to get below about 4380 if it gets below 4380 then uh, you may have a short here um, let, let's let's think about what we've got going on here you've got a uh, trend and you have a top that's actually an ascending triangle right there so we should absolutely wait for some news for some information for something that tells us are we going to break out or are we going to break down right here we're failing the 50 period moving average we failed the i'm sorry 500 we failed the 500 we're struggling at the 500 we're trying to make sense of this we're trying to digest the 500 period moving average we need to know if it's actually going to digest it in a positive way or, or digest it in a negative way <laughs> it's been a long day <laughs> before we make any calls on that but um i'd put it on the watch list maybe let's see julian thank you have to go thank you very much appreciate it uh i'm in wdc too long or short jim um dltr short dltr uh yeah that is still short let's uh take a peek at the weekly the reason i look at the weekly it's a way to step back on the chart and see i just stepped back without getting off my stool i sit on a stool all day without getting off my stool and going to my back wall and looking at the daily chart i can just simply put it on the weekly chart and i can stay sitting in my stool so dltr to me still looks like it might get the 500 period moving average right here that still looks short but when you get there you're gonna you're gonna meet some turbulence that is the nature of a major moving average i'm not saying it's gonna bounce and go bullish i'm just saying you're gonna meet turbulence there and how will you handle that turbulence but right now yeah absolutely short nothing about it that's bullish that's for sure uh i've owned and let's see i've owned see since uh nice bw so so it's really not a technical trade so really the truth it has has nothing to do with the chart uh particularly um you're going uh, you're going after it from uh like you say right there a ge spinoff um so yeah makes sense i mean you know if that's what you're going to do with it yeah technically has you have no value in it then yeah uh, nicole if you're talking about a long trend that has a 45 degree you know just a term for me that indicates a nice trend one steve used off often yeah i mean if, if you want to you know 45 degree trend if you want if that's your thing sure uh if the trend looks like that no not so much but that's what you're after you can look at just about every bullish chart under the sun that has been bullish for any length of time. And the trend at times has been about 45 degrees. In fact, what you'll find is this right here. Charts that have been bullish for a good period of time, um, you know, they'll be, you'll see that 45 degree trend and then they will go nuts they will just get stupid and then they get back into their 45 degree trend and then they get stupid again that's what charts do and then they get back into their trend every bullish chart in the world since time since trading started if you go back and look at every chart that's what it's going to look like every single time and that 45 degree trend about about that that's perfection that's perfection. Yeah. 
let's see, under smaller pattern and volume, would you consider, uh, um, no, uh, as well, um, I'm drawing a blank, um, open interest, sorry, um, under, under, under similar pattern and volume, would you consider, I always consider, I consider delta and open interest, you're, I guess you're looking at volume there, I don't consider volume, uh, I, I look, at, or maybe you're looking at intrinsic value, I don't look at that, I look at uh, open interest and delta is all I look at, um, and, and the time, looking for something 40 plus days, 50 plus days, and then uh, open interest and delta, they have to match up, over 70, good open interest, um, and then that's my trade. Uh, yes, please, Rick, can you draw? Yes, please, I'm worn out. Please draw a line, somebody. Let's call it um, two more minutes. I'll take two more, que two more questions and we're done. We need to go, I'm tired. Uh, no wonder will it rebound. I, Mel, I don't know, DHR may be close to bottoming. Everything is close to bottoming. Uh, every close to, everything is close to bottoming and everything is close to topping. You don't know that until you get that trend. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait patiently till the price action gives us the proper, the proper setup. I'm not a bottom picker. That's bottom picking. And I'll let the proper setup. The trend indicator is going to have to come down and it's going to have to turn green. And I'm going to have to be patient and wait. I'm not going to get the cheap buy. You are. That's great. There's traders, different strokes for different folks. But I'm going to wait for that setup, the same setup that I look for every single time. And then we'll look for that trade. Now, I, you know, I can only share what I look at. I can't share what I don't look at. Uh, and I'm not a bottom picker. And that's what that is. Um, let's see, Jim Long, I don't know, Long WC shares, oh, Long Elliott Wave, okay. Yeah, I don't do Elliott Wave too much. Um, you know, everybody has their thing. I know a couple of people in the room that do. I even recently went to a um, webinar, a private, a private webinar, uh, just half a dozen people, and I was invited to it on Elliott Wave. I learned a lot. I uh, hope I get invited back if you're in the room. Um, maybe, maybe this is that person. Um, I hope I get invited back because I did find it very interesting and I would like to learn more about Elliott Wave, but I typically don't do Elliott Wave. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this now. And this is what my chart looks like during the day right there. I'm going to get rid of all that. There we go. What I'm going to look at is the trend. I'm going to look at the price action and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to draw that line. I wouldn't touch this till it breaks out. And I wouldn't be short until it actually starts to break down. And that's going to be somewhere uh, below 44, is maybe even a, a, a little bit lower. That's what I'm going to look at. Uh, if we look at the weekly chart, that's still trending up. Um, you know, pretty decent. You're running into a lot of resistance right in here. So, uh, like I say, I, I mean, I just don't see that as short right now. Is all. Let me show you a trade. Uh, here, here is, uh, and then we're gonna call it a night. Okay. Um, let's look at Meta, because I happen to know that somebody, and maybe Jim, maybe this is you. I don't know. Um, somebody is short. Um, Meta, because of and, and Elliott Wave comes into play. I'm pretty confident of that. Uh, I was long Meta and closed it today for a loss because it not looking what I want. But I see Meta right now still, still more as a long. Now, I'm I'm not I'm going to manage. I'm going to watch it because I'm out of it now. I'm going to watch it and I'm still looking for that long, but I will have no problem being short if it gives me the short signal. It's not giving me the short signal right now. 
Now, every trader is a little different. Every trader is uh, looks at you know charts differently. Doesn't make doesn't mean that that they're um, they're wrong or anybody's wrong. Um, here's something I do in the trading room. Uh, it doesn't matter how you trade. You can trade with uh, uh, eggs and sticks and however you want. If this is your account, and overall, if your account is growing, you're going to have bad days, bad weeks, even bad months. But if your account overall is growing, I don't care if you trade with uh, egg yolks and spinach. You're doing the right job. Uh, however, if your account is doing this, well, again, I don't care what you're trading with. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> that's the difference between right and wrong. That, that's it right there. So, um, you know, we'll see how that turns out. It's not looking great. I admit that. Uh, what I saw was uh, our, our price action building a bottom here. We rallied up and then I bought it yesterday. And it just turned out that, well, okay, didn't hold in there so well today. And I did close it out because I'm, I'm protecting uh, from more losses and protecting those gains right in here. But overall, there's still a trend in this chart. And, and that's what I have to look at. The weekly chart. I don't see anything bearish in the weekly chart. I see uh, sideways that... that that um, uh, yeah, let's go to this chart right here. There we go. I see where your money gets taken in chop. Very few traders make money in chop. Okay. Um, I know you all get emails, texts, whatever. Somebody just made a billion dollars because they traded. Um, they got some. Um, what is it called? Uh, blue black eyes or black? I I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I get them all the time. Um, blue pool, black pool, pool, wh whatever it is with the pool. That, that's a cockamamie load of crap, if you ask me. But uh, that, that's just another reason for the 95 percenters to blame, you know, whatever it is. The, the dark pool, that's it. The dark pool. Um, well, I'm one of those 95 percent traders that fail, and it's all because of the dark pool. Yeah, jeepers creepers. The dark, you know, no. Um, no, not at all. Anyway, sidetrack. Right here, this is where a trader has to recognize that, and maybe I need to recognize that, I need to recognize that that's chop right there. Nobody makes money in chop, and I don't care who you are. I, I, don't, I don't give a rat's patoot who you are. If you tell me you made a billion dollars when we're in chop, I'm going to call you out on the carpet because I know it's not real. I've been doing this too long and I've talked to too many people. And you have to know what's real and you have to know what's not. And nobody makes money in CHOP. And Meta has entered CHOP right now. I need to stay out of it till what? Till it breaks out of CHOP or breaks down through CHOP. And I would have no problem getting short on this. Damn thing owes me some money. <laughs> And revenge trading is not good. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm about to lose my voice. I hope to see everybody in the trading room. Seriously, if you're still here and still listening, uh, grab that trial. Come on in the trading room. Watch your email. Um, remember, Doug has a, a we're going to talk about that a lot in the next few days. Uh, Doug's 3A uh, trap class is uh, phenomenal. Um, uh, it, it, come in the trading room tomorrow uh, if you can and ask and don't ask me ask other people that's taken the class let them tell you let them be the spokesperson and they will tell you uh, and then um, we'll take it from there okay everybody have a wonderful 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 evening sorry this went too long My wife's gonna kill me we'll see everybody tomorrow uh, bright and early okay thanks so much for being here good night everybody thank you